Pretty hard to follow that, huh? <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Finally, people are not looking at me weird. <laughs> I, I love Christmas, yeah. And I say Merry Christmas all year long. You know, if anybody knows me, been around me, I say Merry Christmas. And kids, they, they love it. They get a kick out of it because they look at me and 99% of the time, it's not Christmas yet. And then the parents, 99% of the time, are looking at me like, you are a crackpot. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, uh, man, I love this time of year, and uh, this morning I'd like to talk with you about um, big news. We're going to be in Luke chapter 1 this morning. If you'd like to turn there with me, Luke chapter 1. Now, in our Bibles there, we have two Testaments, okay? We have the Old Testament and the New Testament, and in the Old Testament, uh, there are 36 books or 39 books. Okay, and uh, most of your Bibles, if you look there, is only separated by one page. There's one page that separates the, the Old Testament from the New Testament. And the Old Testament, it ends with the book of Malachi, right? The book of Malachi, that was uh, what scholars believe is the last book that was written in the Old Testament. And so uh, in between uh, Malachi and Matthew is a blank page, and that blank page represents 400 years of history. 400 years of history. Now, that's important to know for a couple of reasons. One, uh, our Bible is full. It's full of miracles. That's right. Uh, from beginning to end, man, we read many, many miraculous things. But what's important for us to realize is that through time, uh, those miracles just didn't happen one after the other after the other. Sometimes there were many years between miracles, sometimes even a thousand years at times. There was time between miracles. So it, it just wasn't uh, all of a sudden every day just miraculous things happening until Jesus come on scene. And then, man, he come on scene with unfettered power that the world had never seen before, really has never seen ever since. He just did miracle after miracle after miracle. Sometimes no time goes by. It was just a miraculous thing after the other. Jesus had power. But sometimes throughout the rest of time, man, we see that there was, there was a big span of time uh, between miracles. And so uh, this morning, we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 1 where uh, there has been 400 years. 400 years since God had spoken at the end of Malachi until now what we're going to look at this morning god breaks his silence he breaks his silence and he gives this big news that his son is going to come into the world to redeem the souls of men big news this morning and so we're going to look at luke chapter 1 we're going to start there in verse 32 luke chapter 1 starting in verse 32 and it says uh this is the angel Mary, uh, gabriel had come to mary and said, hey, you're going you're gonna to conceive a child, and he will be great. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. Will you pray with me this morning? God... Uh, we're so thankful for another day of life. God, we're thankful that uh, we can be here in your house, God, and commune together. God, we can remember the sacrifice of your son. Uh, God, we are so thankful that we are alive, God, that uh, we are for the most part healthy. God, we're so thankful that we live in a place where we can worship you freely. And God, so right now we are focusing on you. God, help us to clear our minds of the distractions, God, of our families or our works or whatever it is, God, and help us to focus on this big news that you send into the world. God, this news that uh, you love us. God, we pray that you grow your church this morning. God, we pray uh, that if there's someone here that has not accepted your son as their savior, God, we pray that you will surround them with courage to do so. God, we pray for growth, and we know that no matter who plants or who waters the seed, God, all the growth comes from you, God. So grow us spiritually, grow us numerically, God, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
So uh, here in Luke chapter 1, uh, we're talking about big news, big news. So again, the, the Old Testament ended with Malachi, all right? And so uh, I have a PowerPoint this morning there. And uh, Malachi chapter 4, uh, verse 5, uh, God, uh, he said this through his prophet. He said, see, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Okay, so uh, the prophet Elijah. Now, we know the prophet Elijah. A lot of us have read his stories before. You got that PowerPoint, Ian? Oh, good. So, um, we know Elijah. Elijah was probably one of the most famous prophets in the whole Bible. Okay, uh, he did uh, many mir miraculous things, or God through the Holy Spirit uh, did many miraculous things through him. And one of the things that we know happened with Elijah is he was he didn't die. He was carried up in a, a chariot of fire, right? A whirlwind. He didn't die. And so um, here, uh, he lived 1,900 years before Jesus came. 1,900 years before Jesus. And so here, the end of Malachi, just 400 years before Jesus, says this. He says, see, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Man, how does that connect? How does that work? I'm glad you asked. That's a good question. <laughs> That's a great question. Okay, how does, these, how does this connect? Okay, notice uh, in Luke chapter 1, um, we're going to get to that, all right? Uh, notice in, in Luke chapter 1, um, prior to our verses that we talked about this morning, Luke chapter 1, verse 13, it says, The angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah as he was burning incense in the temple, and he said, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. So Zechariah, he was in the he was in the temple. He was burning incense, right? And he was married. His wife's name was Elizabeth, and she was old. She was old, and she was barren. And so God breaks this four hundred years of silence and sends the angel Gabriel to Zechariah and says, "Hey." You're going to have a baby. Surprise. Surprise. You're, you're, going to have, be a, you're going to have a baby. And so now I know what you're thinking. Uh, Malachi, uh, through Malachi, God says that he's going to send Elijah. And the angel comes, breaks the silence and said, hey, you're going to have a baby and you're going to call him John. Man, where, how do these connect? How, where, where does this connection uh, meet at? Matthew chapter 11 verse 14 says, he, talking about John the Baptist, John the Immerser, it says he is the Elijah who was to come. That's important to know. Man, it's important to make that connection. That God breaks the silence by sending John the Baptist into the world. John the Baptist is found, uh, his story is found in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are only uh, just a few stories that connect over in every, in every Gospel, uh, the feeding of the 5,000. That's in every Gospel. And also, uh, the, the story of John the Baptist, and then most importantly, the story that's in every Gospel is what? Do you know? There you, you did good, Josh. Yeah, the crucifixion, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those are the things that are found in all four Gospels. And so John the Baptist, man, he's this fireball preacher. He's a fireball preacher. Luke chapter 3, you did good, Ed. Thank you. Uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 9 says that uh, the axe, <laughs> the axe is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire now he's talking to these Jewish people and he's saying hey you can live as righteous as you want to but if you're not producing fruit then you're gone you're going to be thrown into the fire right and so he's a fireball preacher he tells it exactly like it is Right? And so uh, these people, they thought they were special, these Pharisees, because they knew the law. Man, they, they lived the law to the T. They didn't go right. They didn't go left. They stayed right in there. The problem was with their life was that nothing was being, nothing, no fruit was being produced. Nothing really good was coming from that except for the fear of the people looking at their lives. 
nobody was being brought into their faith. Uh, no, no kind of, of growth was happening there. And so John, uh, he says flat out, hey, if you don't produce fruit, then you're gone. You're going to be cut off. In fact, the axe is already at the root of this tree. And they rejected John. They said, don't, don't, say, don't, don't, you, don't say to yourselves, uh, we are Abraham's children. John said, don't say to yourselves, we are Abraham's children. John said, from these rocks, God can raise up children from Abraham. And praise the Lord, you know who those children are? It's us. It's us. In fact, later on, uh, Jesus, he was talking to this Canaanite woman, and he says, it's not right for the children's bread to be thrown to the dogs. You know who those dogs were? Man, it's the Gentile people. And those Gentile people are us. Man, and that's what John the Baptist had already started preaching, even before Jesus. He's saying, hey, if you don't straighten up, if you don't follow after this Jesus that's coming, then you're going to be thrown out. You're going to be cut off. And praise God, that happened because, man, we've been grafted in as Gentiles, as Americans today, as Christ followers. We have been grafted into the family tree of Jesus Christ. That, is that good news? Amen. That's right. Yeah. Man, you can write your footnotes right now that, that says, boom, shakalaka. Right? Man, that's, man, that's, something, that's something pretty awesome. Right, man, we as believers of Christ have been grafted into the tree of Jesus Christ. And that's what John already started. He already started preaching there before Jesus. That's big news. God is breaking the silence with big news. First, he tells Zechariah that his wife Elizabeth is going to have a child. And he's, he's, he's excited, right? So this man, he's he's. He's, he's, has this, he's pledged this allegiance to God. He's, he's in the temple every morning. He's burning incense, right? He's having relations with his wife. They're, they're trying to have a child. And so God comes to him and said, hey, it worked. It worked. And so here comes John the Baptist. And he grew up. He was a great preacher. The silence had been broken. And right after that, we read uh, after John the Baptist, we see that in Luke chapter 1, verse 30, we see... That the, the same angel that went to Zechariah went to Mary. Went to Mary. And Gabriel goes to Mary and says, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. And his kingdom will will never end. That's big news. Man, that's huge news right here. Man, these people, they've been expecting God to break his silence. They've been waiting and waiting and waiting and anticipating, well, what's it going to look like? How's it going to sound? Where, where's it going to come from? And here, God has showed up. God has showed up to his believers. God has showed up to his people. This is big news. This is what the prophets had foretold. This is, and it's coming true. Zechariah announced it, Mary announced it, Elizabeth, Zechariah's wife, the mother of John the Baptist. So it tells the story about she's six months pregnant and Mary uh, comes and visits Elizabeth. And in Luke chapter 1, verses 41 through 43, it says, When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. John the Baptist was overturned in her womb just for joy. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you bear. But why am I so favored? The mother of my Lord should come to me. This is big news right here. Can you hear what Elizabeth is announcing? She's saying, hey, Jesus, Christ, this, this baby that you come, I'm not even worthy to be in your presence, Mary, because you're carrying the Son of God. Can you see that? Can you read that? Man, this is, this is big news. And sometimes I wonder if, if we, as we, we read these stories at Christmas time or even throughout the year, we just kind of skim over these verses because we know the story, right? We know the story, so we're almost kind of numb. But we need to see that this is huge. This isn't something to just skim over and, and nonchalantly read or talk about. This is big news. The mother, the mother of my Lord is coming to see me, Elizabeth exclaims. 
Man, that's huge. Elizabeth announced it. Zechariah, we had already talked about. The angel of the Lord came to, came to him and told him that he was going to have a baby, and he didn't believe it. What we didn't talk about, though, is so he didn't believe it, and so the angel took his, took his voice away, held his tongue. The cat's got your tongue. Could you imagine going up to somebody that the angel, does the angel have your tongue? She, she, it did. Gabriel had his tongue and John couldn't speak. And so uh, one day uh, there was a group of guys come around and said, Hey, John, hey, hey, Zachariah, what is your baby's name going to be? So he grabbed that. He went to the whiteboard, right? And grabbed that green candied apple scented marker, dry erase marker, and wrote up there, His name will be John. And immediately, immediately his tongue was loose. Man, and he was so excited. He started praising God. In fact, in Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 68 through 69, listen to what Zechariah said, praising the Lord. He said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. Now, Mima, my mama, she's here this morning. My Mima was a school teacher. She taught language arts, right? And so she taught me that has is, a, is past tense, right? Like we has ate breakfast this morning, right? <laughs> Meaning that we done did it, right? And it's, it's already happened. And so here, this has, he's already saying Jesus has come into the world and has redeemed just by his presence here. That's what Zechariah is announcing. Look, check it out in verse 69. It says, he raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Zechariah is announcing this big news. This is big news. Later uh, in Matthew chapter 1, uh, we see uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, uh, this is Joseph. This is talking about Joseph. Zechariah announced it. Elizabeth announced it. Mary announced it. Joseph. It says, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph. Son of David, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Do you know, do you know that Mary, as a, as a woman during this day, if, if as a Jewish woman, in fact, that she could have been stoned to death for having uh, relations outside of marriage? Did you know that? She could have been, she could have died because of this. She, she could have been stoned to death because she was pregnant, right? Except for God shows up. God shows up and he speaks. He speaks. He says in verse 21, he says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save the people from their sins, right? And some of you are writing them notes. You know what you already got to write down there. He'll save them from your sins. Boom, shakalaka. Right? Man, that is, that's huge news. Right here, Joseph, he's announcing it, right? Man, and it's, it's, getting close, it's getting close to Christmas. It's getting so close to Christmas. And people, man, we say Merry Christmas. Yeah, we're supposed to say Merry Christmas. If somebody says Happy Holidays, just punch them in the throat or something, right? That's, I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to entice any hate speech, okay? <laughs> if you need to talk about that, please uh, email Pastor Roger Rabby at yahoo.com, okay? <laughs> yeah. No, man, we're supposed to say that. We're, we're supposed to say Merry Christmas. It's, man, there's so much in that right there. That, that's the gospel message in those two words. Did you know that? And, and when we, we just say it nonchalantly, man, we're not doing our Savior Jesus Christ justice. And that's a way when we just say Merry Christmas to people. Man, it's a way we can have a, a way to talk to people about Christ, about their Savior, about the reason, the real reason for the season. Man, it's big news. Big news. How big is it that Jesus was coming into the earth? How big is that news? It's big. How long ago had it been talked about? Genesis chapter 3. All the way at the beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it says, the, this is talking about the woman's offspring, Mary. It says, he will crush your head, Satan. Woo! 
Man, that's exciting news right there. This is what this is talking about Jesus. He's going to crush Satan's head. Satan who came into the world and destroyed, tried to destroy what Jesus God had created. Man, it says he'll crush your head. That's this Jesus. That's, that's how big this news is here. It's what the whole Bible from cover to cover is talking about. It's about Jesus Christ. He's the main character. It's a love story. It's, it's the promise to Abraham. What we read about, it says, uh, And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. This is talking about Jesus. Man, it affects the whole world. This is exact. Man, it's so big. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of that promise. He's in every book. He's in every book, including Job. Including Job. Do you know that many scholars agree that the book of Job is the oldest book written in the Bible? It's the oldest book written in the Bible. And uh, man, it's a beautiful book. The, the language in there is it's just beautiful. If you study some Hebrew, man, the poetry, it is a wonderful book. And sometimes it's hard to understand, but for the most part, man, it's beautiful. And we all know Job's story, right? Job, wealthy man, had faith in God, lost it all, still kept his faith in God, still kept his faith strong. And so God blessed him and it ended up having double what he started out with, right? Man, we know that story, but Where's Jesus in all that? I'm glad you asked. You're asking good questions this morning, right? I'm glad you asked. Job uh, chapter 19, verse 25, it says, I know that my Redeemer lives. Man, that would make a good song, wouldn't it? Job chapter 19 verse 25 says, I know my Redeemer lives, and in the end he will stand on the earth. See, God's word, it's all about Jesus. From the oldest book to the newest book, it's all about Jesus and how God sent his son into the earth to redeem the souls of men. And that's what Christmas is all about. That's what Christmas is all about. It says, for unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. <laughs> of the greatness of, the, of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. That's big news, folks. That's big news. Man, that changes everything. It, man, that's even bigger than the, the kind of makeup that Trump's wearing these days. Man, something. Man, that's huge. This is big news. And folks, I'm here to tell you this morning, this morning, it's still, it's still big news. It's still big news. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Born to you this day in the city of David is a savior who is Christ the Lord and whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Man, that's big news. That's big news. That's, that's big love right there. It's big love. And here's the deal. is God can't love you any more than he already does right now. God can't love you any more than he already does right now. Man, his love is full for you. It's full for me. Man, God's love for you, it's not dependent on your performance. There's, there's nothing that you have to do in order to earn God's love for you. It's already there, and he's shown it by sending Jesus Christ into the world. Man, there's, there's nothing that you can do to earn your way into heaven. It's just your faith. Just your faith in Jesus Christ. He loves you no matter what. Man, those stripes on his back, they were mine. And they were yours. 
Man, Jesus was, he, he come into this world, man, just huge, in a huge way. Big news. He lived a big life. He died a big death. But I'm here to tell you this morning that good news is that he didn't stay there. He didn't stay there. He rose up out of that grave. He's in heaven right now preparing a place for us. And so I, my question is, do, do you believe that this morning? That big news that God sent into this world, do you believe that it's true? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Man, if you do, then, man, praise Him. Praise Him. I, uh, man, I've been struggling uh, since September. And uh, not really with my faith, but with just joy. You know, kind of, it's been there, but man, it's been kind of hidden. Uh, just lots of things going on. And uh, man, Monday, Monday I took a road trip. And uh, I went to see Casey Becker in KU. And uh, man, I was expecting her to be on her last leg. Right? Talking to Kenneth and uh, Miss Addie, her mama, and uh, Mr. Gary, who went to see her in the hospital, man, she was not doing good. I expected her to be laid up just out of it. And uh, I walked into that hospital room, and Casey Becker was sitting on the couch drinking ice water. She had just got finished eating supper. And, uh, man, something stirred in me. Like, I, I don't know, y'all ever heard what Psalm 100 verse 1 says? It, it says, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Man, something stirred it. Man, that was weak, church. I know it's been a long time. Man, but something stirred in me, that joy again, because God is still moving today. He's still moving today. It is through the prayers of the faithful warriors that Casey Becker is home right now. Ain't that right, Kenneth? Man alive, boy. Woo! It's huge. It's huge. And man, sometimes we just need those reminders that God is still here. He's still here. Man, he was born of a virgin. He died a death that we, we should have died. He rose to life. And he is still here. He's still moving in this earth today. And my, my challenge to you this morning is, Christian, say Merry Christmas. But don't just stop there. Man, tell everybody about him. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about how good he is and how alive he is and how still at work he is in this world. This morning, there's nothing that you can do. Nothing that you can do to make God love you anymore. His love is full for you right now. But even Satan and his angels know that God is real. Even Satan trembles at his voice. The difference is, is that we follow after God and, and Satan has his own little deal over there. Who knows what in the world he's trying to do. This morning you have it a chance to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have a chance to, to come up and, and confess him in, in front of everybody. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. This morning, if you're outside of Christ, will you come and accept Him as your Lord and Savior? Man, He's ready, and He loves you.